welcome everybody. So happy that you could join us. Um, this technology Misty and I were talking about um, before we, we opened up the webinar here, how, um, how amazing this technology has been. I mean, we've been through a lot here with this pandemic and I know everybody's stressed and that's why y'all showed up here. Um, but there are also some wonderful things that are coming out of it because gosh, I gotta tell you, I have more people attending today than when I've done these in person in Monona Terrace. So there's some convenience factor and, and some neat things. So um, we're gonna start out today. We're talking about fight, flight, or freeze. It's that main um, reaction that our bodies have. It is innate in who we are and how our bodies function. And there's really not a whole lot that we can do to stop that. We have to override it. So that's what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to give you three different tools um, that are going to help you on a regular basis that you can use to, um, to work with that fight, flight, or freeze response that your body naturally has. So um, let's start just a little bit first and let me explain to you. We're going to have a few slides. We're going to do a couple of exercises together. And um, right now, I just kind of want to set the stage to make sure that we all understand what this fight, flight, or freeze response really is and how it shows up in our lives, okay? Um, one of the areas that I am fascinated by and the direction that my practice is going in um, is the stress management piece of things because we are spending so much of our lives in one aspect of the fight, flight, or freeze. Um, so let's jump back a little bit and talk about what that is exactly. So fight, flight, or freeze is our body's automatic response when we experience stress. It was designed um, way back in the day when we were cavemen running around fighting off saber-toothed tigers to literally keep us alive, right? So the stress that we experienced at that time was, are we going to have enough to eat and are we going to survive the day? Really, I mean, it was that basic. And so you can imagine the scenario. So maybe if you'd like, close your eyes and do a little picturing of your, you know, walking around back in caveman times. And all of a sudden you come across a big saber-toothed tiger. All right, well, the first thing you think is your body is already reacting. <laughs> your body already goes into response. But if we look at it with, right now with our rational brains, we can kind of picture and think about this a little bit and say, hmm, all right, I'm there, saber-toothed tiger. First thing I'm probably thinking about is, is there anybody else here? <laughs> Am I on my own? Um, is there anyone to help me? Or are there people I have to protect, right? Elderly, sick, children, that I need to make sure that they're not um, harmed by the saber-toothed tiger. So yes, we can think about all of that in our rational brain right now, but if you were in that situation in the moment, what would happen is all these responses go on in your body that are taking all of that into account, all of the past experiences that you've had, everything that you've been taught, um, all of these things that we're observing all the time, but we're not always consciously aware of. And you're gonna make a decision. Okay, do I need to fight off this tiger? Do I need to flight, flee, run away? Or do are neither one of those options and I have to freeze? Okay, so that's the first thing that's happening and you make that decision very, very quickly. Then, so, fight, flight, right? You're either gonna fight it or you're gonna run away or this freeze option. And, and the freeze option is really interesting because it's where we as modern humans spend most of our stress time. Because if you think about it, the things that are stressing us out right now are not saber toothed tigers, are they? <laughs> no, they are things like, do I have a job? How stressful is my job right now? Um, are, is my family healthy? All, all of these things that, what can we really do about them right now in the moment, except just kind of keep trudging on. So what we do, we can't run away from that difficult situation typically, and, and especially now. Um, it's very difficult to fight it. So let's use an example here. If you are experiencing a situation with, um, with your boss, okay, so you're, you're working, you have a supervisor or a boss who is kind of coming down on you about something, and it, it triggers you. So you get triggered, you automatically go into this fight, flight, or freeze response because your brain doesn't know the difference between your boss raising his or her voice to you, which feels threatening, or a saber-toothed tiger back in, in caveman times. So that response is triggered, but then your rational brain is saying to you, well, I can't fight, right? Like punching my boss is not gonna fix this problem. In fact, it's probably going to make it worse. And I can't run away because I need this job. So what do you do? 
okay, I got to freeze, I got to take it. And that's what we do. So now let's pop back to caveman times. And if you can picture what would happen if you're facing that saber tooth tiger, you've decided you can't, you don't have enough people with you to fight it off. Um, you're not gonna be fast enough to run away because it's just too close to you. Your last option is to freeze. All right, so now think about how you would freeze. What would you do? If you're somewhere near the ground, probably, you're gonna try to move as little as possible. So you might just freeze like this, right? But if you can, what you end up doing is closing in on yourself, right? I'm gonna move back just a little bit. You're gonna end up bringing your body all together like this and being as still and quiet as you can. Now, why would you not just lie on the ground, put your chest and everything out to the world and to that saber tooth tiger? Imagine that for a minute. You feel like you're physically threatened and you decide to lie down on your back. Probably not, right? Just, just notice in your body how that feels to imagine doing that. If a wild animal is about to attack you, would you lie like this? Or would you close in on yourself? You'd close in, right? And, and so think about why that is. I think it's just really fascinating because what happens is your, your body automatically has this reaction to close in on itself because what it's doing is protecting all of your vital organs, right? Think of all of the things that are on the front side of your body. And so inherently and innately, we want to close in and protect all of that. So think about just the structures of the body. What do we have that is protecting those vital organs? Why would we want to go in like this? Well, we have our, our shoulder blades, right? Those are nice big bones that are across the back of our body and help protect our heart. We have a rib cage that goes around front to back that helps protect vital organs. We have our hip bones. Those protect reproductive organs, right? All of that. Um, so our little tailbone tucks up, our head tucks in and we go whoop, and make ourselves as small as we can because that is protecting all of our vital organs. So if that saber tooth tiger decides to swipe at you and see if you're, you're tasty or not, if it gets your back, yeah, you're gonna bleed, but the chances of it doing any serious life-threatening damage are much, much more reduced. However, if you are wide open, all it takes is one swipe down the middle of you or across you, and you know, you've taken out your lungs and your liver and your heart and all these things that we really need to survive. So the point of all of this, this little uh, the biology lesson, is for you to really appreciate how hardwired our stress response is. It is literally designed to keep us alive from moment to moment. And when we are doing that, now, like I said, in, in modern times, we end up staying in that freeze mode because we don't have the option of, of punching someone or running away. We just gotta take it. So we're not stuck though, okay? So it feels like we're stuck. I've kind of set up this whole scenario of, boy, are we stuck and this is terrible. But there are ways to work with that freeze response and get ourselves out of the fight, flight, or freeze response. And another reason why it's really important for us to do this is because when you go into fight, flight, or freeze, I kind of alluded to this earlier, you're in automatic response mode, right? You're just like everything, you're just, you're going on instinct. Your higher reasoning functions in your forebrain are kind of turned off. They're not at their best. So you're not in a space where when somebody at work says something that triggers you, you're not gonna be like, well, let's be reasonable about this, right? Your first reaction is, hey, come on, you know, and then to react in a, a fight type way. Uh, we often overcome that, but internally, that's what's happening and we wanna work with this. So here's some tools that you can use. I, I mentioned earlier, I have three of them for you. They don't take very long. There are things that I think would be great to do on a regular basis. I find them very helpful and I recommend them to all of my, my patients. Um, so the first one, we're gonna talk about power poses. Anybody heard of power poses? Okay. <laughs> um, so let's take, take a look at what power poses are. I'm gonna share my screen with you so that you can get a little sense of what this is all about here. All right, so this is just representing that, that energy that we all feel like, oh, something's happening, right? It goes between people, it runs through us. I, I talk about this a lot more um, a little bit later and in some other presentations as well. Um, but let's look here at this lady. 
<laughs> these ladies, let's say. <laughs> All right, you probably recognize them um, if you're, you're my age or <laughs> have done any um, history or anything. You might recognize the woman in the costume behind there. That's a Wonder Woman played by Linda Carter. And the woman in front of her is Dr. Amy Cuddy of Harvard University. And what they are both demonstrating for you is a power pose. All right, so when you think of Wonder Woman, Right, she looks, she looks pretty powerful. She's got it going on. Nobody's gonna mess with her. She knows what's, what's happening. She's strong. That's who we wanna emulate. So let's take a look here at some other types of poses. I'd like you to look through each of these and see what you can find in common with them. Look at, uh, look at their arms. What are their arms doing? What are their legs doing? What's the trunk of their body doing? What's the overall shape that they're making, right? So I would imagine that all of you are thinking, yeah, they're closed in on themselves, right? They're, they're crossing their body, they're crossing their arms, they have their arms in, touching their neck, right? Legs are often crossed, you know what? Two of the, two of the five have their legs crossed. Many of them are going over. What does that remind you of? Yeah, it reminds you of that freeze pose that we talked about where our automatic response is to close in and shut down. So these are low power poses. Anytime you find yourself sitting like this, you're not in your power. Now, this is not just like in your power, woo woo. There's actually some um, science behind this. So let's take a look at that. Um, well, first of all, let's look at uh, the high power poses and notice the difference here. Look at their arms. Arms are all wide. We've got the lady when the, the Wonder Woman pose. We've got someone with their high hand, uh, two people with their hands behind their head. You've probably seen the guy in the middle, right? We've got the arm out, the legs spread wide. The woman in the lower corner, she's got her hands on the table and leaning forward, right? Being all dominant. Um, so these are all positions that are high power poses. They all are expressing dominance. And when you think back to our saber tooth tiger example, right? If you are being attacked by a saber-toothed tiger, this is probably more of a position. Um, this is not the position that you would take, right? Because you're, you're putting everything at risk out front. Maybe if you're trying to intimidate the tiger, but I don't know that that's gonna work so well. But generally you see what I'm saying, right? The ones before, let's go back and look at those again. Those are all coming in, they're closing in, they're protective. I'm making myself small so that I'm not seen. Okay, that's not very powerful. It might get you through, it might help you survive, but it's not a power pose compared to these here. So what I'd like you to do is if you would, where you are, we can't see you, so feel free to, to you know, let your freak flag, flag fly. <laughs> that's not easy to say. Um, pick one of these poses, wherever you are standing or sitting, choose one of these high power poses right now. And we're gonna hold it for two minutes while I talk to you a little bit about the science behind it. Because I want you to get the impact of how these work. And in order for you to get the benefits of a high power pose, you need to hold it for two minutes. So everybody find their spot. All right, now, Let's talk about some hormones too. And there's Dr. Amy Cuddy's name across the bottom. If you wanna look her up, she has um, a great TED talk where she explains this really interesting lady. She has a wonderful story about um, having a, um, a brain injury uh, right in the middle of her college experience and how she had to completely rework um, how she learned and relearn things. And it was because of that experience that it led her to study these power poses while she was at Harvard. So Dr. Amy Cuddy, you can look her up, really interesting. So, okay, so these two hormones we have to testosterone, and we have cortisol. You probably have heard of those before, right? They might sound at least vaguely familiar, if not very much so. The top one testosterone is typically considered to be the male hormone. Women have it too, but not in nearly as great of concentration as men do. <clears throat> it's the power hormone. It's what makes big muscles. It what's, it's what grows more facial hair. It has all of those typically male um, features are because of testosterone levels. Okay, so we're in this context thinking of testosterone as the power hormone. Now we have cortisol, the one below it there. Cortisol is the stress hormone. That's the one that causes us to hold on to visceral fat, which is the fat around our midsection. Um, it is caused by stress. 
When we are under stress, our cortisol levels rise. We reserve um, more uh, calories as fat because remember when we talked at the beginning of this conversation, uh, one of two of the ones that I mentioned, um, the ways that we felt stressed back in caveman times was, where's my next meal coming from? And am I going to live to see tomorrow? Because am I going to be attacked, right? So when we were experiencing not enough food, that was a stress, our body held on to fat to keep us alive. Okay, so testosterone, cortisol, two hormones, and, and we need them both, right? They're not, neither one of us inherently bad or good. Um, it's just, do you have enough of them or, or the right of, um, appropriate amount of them? So let's think about those low power poses and hopefully you're still holding your high power pose. Don't give up on that, keep holding on. We want those two to three minutes to get you to get the benefit. So in a low, low power pose, your testosterone drops by 10%. Your strength hormone, when you're in those first positions and you're all closed in on yourself, your testosterone level is actually dropping because you're trying to be small. You're trying not to fight. At the same time, your cortisol levels are going up. They're going up 17%. Again, think about yourself with that saber tooth tiger coming after you or your boss yelling at you. You get that, that rush of stress, cortisol levels go up. Now, the beauty is we've all been sitting here, or at least you guys have been, I've been gesturing wildly, um, <laughs> but you all have been um, in these high power poses. And here's the beauty of those. A high power pose increases your testosterone by 19%. That's huge. It used to go down by 10% in the low power pose. It's going up by 19 in a high power pose. So that's a, a swing of almost, um, gosh, 30 points, right? That, that's significant. All right, how about that cortisol? What's that doing? Let's check it out. This is the kicker. Your cortisol levels go down by 25%. That is huge. That's almost 45% of a swing overall. You're making a big, big impact just by standing there, right? In your Wonder Woman pose or with your head behind, hands behind your head, nice, open, relaxed. What you're doing is you're telling your body, you're telling your central nervous system, I'm okay. There's nothing to be afraid of. We're safe. And so it can come out of that fight, flight, or freeze. Now, generally, it's better to do this preemptively, if you can. I find that it's a good idea to do it um, before, um, let's see, let's stop my screen sharing here real quick. Um, I find it's better to do power poses before an event that you know is going to be stressful, right? So that you walk in being your best self, nice and strong, confident on your game. Um, I had a person in one of these classes a while back shared with me that he, um, his wife had shared the idea of power poses with him and he had to um, go into a difficult work situation and he, he knew it was gonna be difficult. So he went into the bathroom, went into a stall beforehand, uh, did one of these power poses where nobody could see him and, and then came back out and had the meeting that he knew was going to be confrontational. And he said he was much, much calmer. It went better. He was more rational in his thinking because he wasn't all keyed up. And so his, his forebrain, his his reasoning brain could be on track. So this is a great thing to do in the morning to start your day, or again, before you have um, an encounter or an appointment or a meeting, a presentation, something that um, is potentially going to, to cause you to be stressed. Okay, so power poses, that's tool number one that we're learning today. Great, um, does anybody have any quick questions on that before we move on to the other ones? I'll, I know we're gonna do most of our questions at the end, but um, if anybody's just a little confused or has a quick question, I'll pause for a second. I'll get a drink of water <laughs> and you all can think about that. Okay, let's see. So are we good here? Okay, we're good. We do not have any questions there. So let's go ahead and move on to our second one. So the next one that we're going to do is, is a way of really keeping your energy running strong all day long. And one of the things that you do, now let's go back to our, our image of us on the ground, back in caveman times, the saber tooth tiger is there and you're on the ground all closed up. Think about how you're gonna be breathing. Just imagine yourself tightened in. Are you gonna be? Uh -uh. You're gonna be. Right, barely breathing, just trying to breathe as quietly and as slowly and as gently as you possibly can. You don't want your rib cage moving in and out because that might antagonize the tiger, right? He'll come and, come and get you. Um, so 
when we are stressed, one of the reactions of this fight, flight, or freeze response is to get very shallow breathing. You may notice that when you um, have an experience like we talked about with your boss or with somebody you love who confronts you in some way. And you may notice that all of a sudden you're, you're breathing up here. <laughs> It gets a little stressful. You're not getting a lot of good oxygen. So one of the great ways to help calm yourself down and to also get out of the fight, flight, or freeze. So this is one that you can do once you've felt triggered, right? So the power poses are great preemptively. You can do them a little bit afterwards too, but I think they're they're most effective before a situation. And um, and then to do the, um, the effective breathing if you feel that you've been triggered. So find yourself a quiet spot or even just in the moment if you can take some breaths. So we're gonna practice that. I'm gonna show you um, a great way to make sure that you're doing good effective belly breathing, which is the most calming um, way to do it. So I'm gonna step back a little bit so you can see a little bit more. I can't quite get my feet into the whole picture here, but I think you can see a little bit more. So what I'd like you to do is first of all, stand with your feet shoulder width apart. A little harder for you to see here, but it, I mean, not like you know, not like Wonder Woman, right? We want to be, <laughs> we want to be more with our feet a little bit um, apart, kind of shoulder width. Um, what that is is if you take, pretend my hands are um, a foot. I'll move forward again here. If this is one foot, take the other, the heel of the other foot, put it into the arch of the first one, and then rotate out. That's going to be about hips width distance apart for your feet. Okay, so we find that. All right, first thing we're going to want to do is get our feet to feel really connected to the earth, ground ourselves. Because when we go into fight, flight, or freeze, we're, ah, we're all up here. We need to bring that energy down, back into our body, back calm, strong. So what I find helpful is to lift your toes just a little bit, whether you're in shoes or not, doesn't matter. Um, lift your toes up. So that helps you feel the bottoms of your feet. So I want you to feel the... Um, the spot right behind your big toe, we call it the big toe ball mount in yoga, if you've ever taken a yoga class, and the little toe ball mount, so that spot at the sole of your foot that's right at the base of those two toes, and then on your heel, the two points on your heel. So again, this is my hand, I'm not gonna show you my foot, but <laughs> so like that, and pretend these are my, thing, my, my toes. Okay, so you're gonna lift up your toes and on both feet and really feel where those four points are on both of your feet. And just notice, maybe put a little bend in your knees and just start to notice, is there more weight on the left side of both of your feet? Maybe on the right side, are you a little more weighted forward or back? All right, just kind of notice and see if you can bring yourself to a space where you feel like your weight is equally on all four corners of each of your feet. All right, a little bit of a bend in your knees. Now I want you to stick your butt out behind you a little bit. So kind of lean over, right? You're gonna lean over, stick your butt out. <laughs> All right, and one of the things, remember when we talked about going to fight, flight, or freeze is you, you curl in like this. And one of the things that curls in is your tailbone. It tucks your tail like a dog that's been naughty. It tucks its tail. We do the same thing. I have been stressed sometimes and I'm brushing my teeth at night. And all of a sudden I'm like, why am I sitting here with my, my tailbone tucked under so tightly as I'm just brushing my teeth? And I realized I'm under sustain, sustained stress. I'm in that freeze mode. Okay, so we've got a nice solid stance with our feet. We've got our butt tucked, stuck out a little bit. So wiggle it back and forth, just kind of let it relax a little bit. And now bring it back in. Instead of tucking it all the way up and under, just tuck it enough that you feel solid. Okay. So your hip bones are nice and even, solid here. Next thing we do is we're gonna practice one thing here. I just wanna give you a feel of this in your body. When I tell you to take a deep breath, everybody take a deep breath right now. Just take a nice deep breath, take another one. And notice, how is your body moving when you take that breath? Are you going, right? Are you, sometimes that's what we do. That's not a good solid breath because let's try it now. Everybody try to inhale and hold your shoulders on the inhale. Now tell me how it all feels through here. Does that feel nice and loose? Ah, no, that feels really tight. <laughs> That's not gonna work so great because what you're doing when you breathe up like this is you're taking your diaphragm, which is that muscle that sits right below your rib cage and it is jamming up into your chest and your lungs. 
you're just sending it shooting way up there. And what happens then is there's no space for your lungs to expand. Everything's tight. Oh, you can feel it all up in here. Oh, so let's let that down. What we're wanting to do is to breathe into our bellies. So first we've got our base nice and solid. We're feeling grounded, connected to the earth. Now let's create some space in our shoulders. So I'd like you to put your shoulders back. Now this is, <laughs> I always laugh at this because growing up, my mom always told me, Wendy, put your shoulders back, right? I was, you know, slouchy teenager. Wendy, put your shoulders back. So what did I do? Fine, right? Fine, I'm gonna put my shoulders back. <laughs> so they're like jammed back like this. Try that. That don't feel so good, does it? <laughs> That's like a different version of this. It's all tight. So what we're gonna do instead is try to get that to, to open up in a more gentle and broad way. So what I'd like you to do is, first of all, notice your hands at your side. And notice as you have your hands resting there, a nice solid base, which part of your hand is facing forward? You see, is it the back of your hands, your thumbs, your palms? In my experience, most people have the back of their hands facing forward. Now, what if I told you that that is 180 degrees opposite of how they're meant to be? If you look at a skeleton that doesn't have all this the connective tissue on it that's pulling bones in different directions, your bones of your hands would be palm forward. Yeah. Crazy, huh? So you're not gonna walk around like that. That would feel weird. <laughs> People would be like, what you doing? And why are you walking like this, right? You'd feel kind of silly. Um, but we don't wanna be like this either because go practice this a little bit, try it. Put your hands out so your palms are forward and now switch it so that the back of your hands are forward and just feel what's happening in your shoulders there. So your shoulders are going back, your shoulders are going forward. Now think about how you spend most of your day. <laughs> All right, what are you doing? You're on a computer. You're on your phone. You're on a phone this way. You're leaning over looking at something. Almost everything that we do has what we call internal rotation of our shoulders coming in. So exaggerate that. Bring your shoulders way in. What are you noticing in your body? Yeah, it's much tighter in this area. Again, so tight this way tight if we overstretch it that way, tight if we move them up this way. What's the person to do? <laughs> well, here's what you do. Put your hands at your side, come back to that nice solid base. You can put your toes down, by the way. I assume that you already have, but in case you haven't, lifting your toes is just a good way to feel um, those four points on your foot. And what I'd like you to do now is bring your shoulders up to your ears, rotate them back, and now bring them down. Huh. That feels a little different, doesn't it? Let's try that one more time. Shoulders up to your ears, a little closer. Shoulders up to your ears, rotate them back and down. Nice, huh? Now what I want you to do is look at your hands. What's facing forward? If I had to bet, I would say 90% or more of you would have your thumbs facing forward at this point. And that's the best we can hope for. That's a reasonable way to stand with your hands. It's not this and it's not this all punched in like we often are. And then what is that? That's a low power pose, right? <laughs> so back to power poses. Okay, so we have our shoulders. Let's do them again. Shoulders up to our ears, rotate them back and bring them down. Okay, wow. So now we've got some good space. We've got a little bit of space and, and we're solid here in the bottom half of our body. We've created space in our chest. Now the question is, how are we going to breathe? So what I'd like you to do is to breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth and see if as you're breathing in, you can bring it down into your belly. So get your shoulders up, rotate them back, and then place your hands on your belly. And then just see if you can, as you inhale through your nose, get your hands to expand outward. Okay, so let's do that together. Breathe in and exhale out through your mouth and your hands go back in. In through your nose, out through your mouth. One more, in through your nose and out through your mouth. Okay, go ahead and have a seat now. Um, sometimes that can make you just a little bit lightheaded. I don't do any more than three breaths because I, I don't want anyone falling over on me, but you just got more oxygen in those three breaths than you probably did the previous, I don't know, 15 or 20. Um, 
because you're really allowing things to fill up. That, that diaphragm that's below your rib cage, when it drops down, now there's all this room for your lungs to expand, right? They can just fill up. And so when you're breathing into your belly, you're creating space for that diaphragm muscle to drop down, your lungs to fill with oxygen. And I think as we all know, more oxygen to your brain helps you think more clearly, right? Get that forebrain going. Okay, so um, that is effective breathing. Just checking my notes here real quick for you. So this is really something that you can do anytime um, that you're feeling stressed. I have done it even when I'm in the middle of a confrontation with somebody that I recognize that I've been triggered, okay? Because we start to notice those signs in our bodies. And, um, and then just as they're talking to me, I'll just... I don't even know what I'm doing. Occasionally, I'll even do a little shoulder thing if I feel like I'm um, slouching too much, if I notice that. And just as I'm listening to them, I have to be careful not to be like, <sighs> and act exasperated with them. That will make the situation worse. But you can calmly and quietly do a few of these breaths to help calm you down in the moment. Okay. So speaking of how we're noticing things in our bodies, before we get to our, our third item that we're going to talk about today, and our, our third tool for using to manage this fight, flight, or freeze response, I'd like to do a little poll for you here, or with you here. So what I'd like you to do is to think about where you're feeling stress, in, when you feel stress, where do you feel it in your body? All right, so Misty's gonna put that poll up for us. There we go. So do you notice that when you're under stress, do you experience headaches, maybe eye twitches, tight shoulders, low back, tightness um, or a weird feeling in your chest, something funny going on in your stomach or something happening with your digestion? Just take a moment and choose. You may feel more than one of those. That, that's not uncommon, but just pick the one that you can pretty much rely on that, hey, when I'm stressed, I know my shoulders get so tight. That's often one that I have. Um, in fact, one that I have learned, and I'll share with you a little bit more here in a minute, is my right hip gets tight. <laughs> Took me a while to figure that one out. I thought there was something seriously wrong with me. And really, it was just where I was holding stress. So your, your item might not be on this list. I tried to pick some of the most common ones. So let's give you just about 10 seconds more to, uh, to register your vote, and then we'll see how that shows up. All right, get those votes in. And then Misty will do the magical tabulation for us and we'll find out kind of what's showing up for everybody. This is a really important thing to start to notice how you experience stress in your body. I've talked to you really about the global piece of it, how our body's automatic response happens. And, um, and that's a systemic thing. So there are lots of different things happening. The reason I have digestion on there is because when you are under attack, your digestion slows down because if you think about it, your body doesn't, it, digesting breakfast is not important if you don't live until lunch, right? Let's, I mean, to put it bluntly. <laughs> so your digestion shuts down when you're dealing with stress. That's why you'll have those issues. Okay, so gosh, uh, far and away, tight shoulders. That really tracks with what I see in my uh, massage and <laughs> energy work practice. Most people show up with tight shoulders. Um, a lot of that has to do with that breathing thing, right? We talked about how we breathe up and close in and all of that. Um, low back, that's a very common one. I think we forget that that is connected to stress. Um, <clears throat> stomach issues are very common. Stomach and digestion kind of go together, so we can almost make those the same. Um, although sometimes you feel um, something in your in your belly or because so in your belly here or kind of up here which is your solar plexus chakra that's your power chakra so sometimes that really gets activated for people um, headaches are another one and eye twitches headaches and eye twitches kind of go together um, because when you think about it they're kind of tied to the third one which is why I have them in that order uh, in that when your shoulders get tight all of the muscles I mean, all these muscles are connected, right? So the muscles in your shoulder, we can um, be done here with the, the pole. Um, there we go, I guess I can close it. Um, thank you, Misty, for doing that, I appreciate it. The, um, the muscles in our shoulders actually attach up into the base of our skull, all along the back here of our skull and down. So when our shoulders are tight, 
that's getting tight here, which then connects into the muscles that go over the top of your head and that all gets tight too. So all of this is a function of that response. And so I invite you to start to really notice where you're feeling tight and when you're feeling tight and putting that together and saying, hmm, maybe there's something that I'm stressed about. Sometimes it's obvious, right? Some things are just, you know, you don't need to think about it. You know, you're stressed. <clears throat> but oftentimes when we're in this um, freeze aspect of fight, flight, or freeze, it's not really clear to us that we're in stress. I've had that experience quite a bit with the, the hip that I mentioned. So for me, I felt like, um, and my shoulders, <clears throat> pardon me, um, my shoulders are very tight too, but um, in this right hip, I would feel like someone was reaching into my hip this way, and then also from the back and meeting in the middle, kind of right about here, and cranking, like just so, so tight. And I'll get like, a, we call them Jimmy legs in my family. Um, the, the leg starts to, to quiver and um, twitch, and a restless leg syndrome is the, the technical term for it. And, uh, and, and so just start to notice what's going on. I had this happen just the other day where all of a sudden I'm like, why is my right leg all fidgety? I'm on the couch trying to watch a show with my family and <clears throat> all up unhappy with it. And then I went, hmm, I wonder if this is just some of the underlying stress that I'm dealing with right now. And um, why don't I use a tool that I have to see if it will fix it? And it did. And I'm going to share that tool with you here right now. So that tool is called Meridian Tapping. It is based on Chinese energy medicine, traditional Chinese medicine. Um, and has anybody ever gone to an acupuncturist? Okay, if you've gone to an acupuncturist and, and done acupuncture, one of my, my favorite uh, treatments to get, it, um, this is working on the same principles, only it's a self-help tool. You don't need needles to put into the points. You, we use tapping to do the point. So let me show you here. I'm gonna share my screen again. And forget I have to hit the button to say share and <laughs> not just choose the thing. Okay, there we go. Okay, so these are the, um, just the head, the, the points and the meridians run all throughout your body. This is just a nice close up of the, um, the head so you can see all the different Chinese energy meridian points that people use and that acupuncturists use when you're getting a treatment. <clears throat> so we're going to be working with many of the ones that are right there on um, the face. So I'm gonna have you just look real quickly here. You'll see the ones that are right at the beginning of the eyebrow. And let me see if I can use the All right, I'm gonna to try to use my tools here. I don't often do this, but let's see if we can. Um, all right, we're gonna do a circle. Can we do a circle there? <laughs> I practiced this yesterday, but it doesn't always work. Okay, let's try, um, let's try this, the mouse. Well, you can see my mouse, right? I guess we'll just go with that. Um, <laughs> it's not working quite the way that I want it to. Um, so, so this spot right here by the eye, the beginning of the eyebrow, this other one by the other eyebrow, that's one of the points that we're going to work with. The next one is going to be over here on the side of the eye. So this is not back on the temple, all right? It's on the bone on the side of your eye. The next one, as you can see right here, the beginning of a meridian, um, and actually there are these two here. We're kind of hitting all three of these when we're doing it. These are the beginnings of um, meridian points. Here's another one right below the eye, the center of the eye on the, um, the bone beneath your eye. Then coming down below your nose, right in that little indentation above your top lip. And then you'll see this point here underneath your chin. Okay, so those are most of the points. There are a few more that are on your body. I'll show those to you here in a minute. Um, but that's what we're working with. And we're going to be working on those points. So um, let's do this real quick. I'm going to stop this sharing so that I can show you those other points. Okay. Um, so if you have your hand sanitizer, hopefully you saw the notes beforehand, grab your hand sanitizer and, um, and just Give yourself a good, <laughs> clean off your hands because we are going to be touching your face and we are living in times of COVID. Um, and so um, what we're going to do is touch those points. I'm going to take off my glasses so that you can see even better here. Um, so you're going to hit the beginning of your eyebrow. You're just going to tap that a few times. You're going to tap the side of your eye, right on that bone, underneath, on the bone there, here underneath your nose, 
and that indentation in your chin. And then the points that weren't in that slide are here on your collarbone. So if you come down the middle of your neck, that little hollow that is at the base of your neck, and then the little bony parts, the beginning of your collarbone. All right, come right, just right on that. You're just gonna tap right on your collarbones, right on those knobby parts. Then underneath your arm, so kind of middle, mid bra line for ladies, guys, it's like three inches down from the center of your, um, your underarm. You can do one or both. And then the top of your head, right in the middle. And then oftentimes I will also do the insides of my wrists together. All of the Chinese energy meridians run from, as you saw, those points that start here, we have points that start here, here, here. Um, they run all along our whole body and out and back on all of our limbs. <clears throat> so when you hit your, the, not hit, you're, you're tapping together, the insides of your wrist, you're actually touching all of the um, meridian points again, just by doing it there. Okay, so those are the points. Hopefully you're familiar with them now enough that we can play around with this a little bit. So I'm gonna share my screen again with you. And what we're gonna do is we're going to do a little exercise here so that you can get a sense of how this works. So what I'd like you to do is um, take, a, um, take a nice deep breath, all right? Um, I'm not gonna mess with the screen again, but take a nice deep breath. Now take a breath and just kind of um, bend over. You can stay seated in a chair, it's fine. Just bend over, breathe down there, and then come all the way up. On the inhale, take the biggest, best breath that you can. If you want to, you can do it a second time. And give that breath a number, okay? How big of a number is it? Let's, let's say that um, the best breath you ever had fullest, most satisfying is a 10. And a one is like, oh, I'm, I'm hardly getting any oxygen, okay? So if you need to, to do that one more time, just to kind of get a baseline, we're gonna see if we can shift our, the quality of our breathing just by using this tool. And then I'm gonna to explain to you how we use the tool um, even more. Okay, so do that, come up with your number. And now, so we're doing this kind of in reverse a little bit here, when it says to assess the intensity, we're gonna be working um, in, a, in a different direction of the number. I'll explain that in a minute. But what I want you to do is we're gonna do what we call the setup. So when you're not sure what's causing stress, you're just noticing that one of those spots in your body that usually speaks up and says, hey, something's going on and, and you've started to pay attention and you're noticing it like my hip the other night, um, then you wanna do this setup piece because you're trying to let your system know, hey, here's where the problem is and this is what we're trying to shift and change in the energy flow of our body. So you're going to pick that number. So you did that for your breath. So hopefully you've had something, you know, um, a nice, fairly decent, good breath. Now you're gonna chop on the karate chop point or where you can see in that picture there, the sore spot. So where we were on these knobby parts before, if you come down, three inches and go out three inches, that's where the so-called sore spots are. And we're gonna have you rub those. So you can either rub those, one or both, doesn't matter, or you can tap on this, if I were to try to break a board with a karate chop, that part, okay. And we're gonna work on those and we're gonna repeat a phrase three different times. So even though I have this, and then you're gonna fill in the blank. So, um, you know what, actually, I'm gonna switch this up on you. Um, let's focus on those spots that are tight for you. I don't know why I didn't think of that before. So let's, that spot that gets tight for you, are you feeling that right now where you're, you're stressed, you know your shoulders are kind of tight, or there's some ache or pain, or your tummy's upset, or whatever it is. Um, hopefully, well, hopefully, I don't want you to have that, but you probably have something like that going on, okay? So let's go ahead and Focus in on that. And so when we say it, I'm going to say, even though I have this tightness in my hip, and I'm going to talk about my hip, but you can, you can tap along with me and say the same words. You can also replace my words with what your thing is about. So just um, keeping it in mind, you actually, there's a benefit, something called borrowing benefits, where even if you say the words about what's going on in my body, whatever it is that's going on in your body will also um, have your, the, the levels reduced for you. So either way, um, but what I'd like you to do is actually repeat after me. Okay, so we're going to tap or rub 
and say, even though I have this pain in my right hip, it is tight. It feels like someone's just reaching in there and squeezing and it hurts. But I deeply and completely love and accept myself anyway. Or I'm okay and all is well, if that other statement feels a little too much for you. And then we repeat it two more times and you can change the wording. Even though I have, so repeat that, even though I have this pain in my hip and it's making my right leg all jittery, it hurts so much, it feels tight, it feels pinchy, I don't understand, but I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Last time, even though, repeat after me, I have this pain in my hip, still tapping, and it feels like it's pinching and twisting. It's causing pain to radiate down my right leg. It just feels overwhelming. And I'm tired right now. I don't want to deal with this. I'm just trying to relax. But I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Okay, great. So now we're going to move on to actually hitting those points. So you can see that on here. So we're going to tap through the points and you're just gonna do a reminder phrase. So coming back up to the um, eyebrows, you can do one or both, doesn't matter. You can switch between them. I just tend to do the right side because that's my habit. So just do a reminder phrase, this pain in my hip. So repeat that after me. It feels tight and pinchy. Come to the side of the eye, this pain in my hip. Take a nice breath. Underneath the eye, it feels tight and pinching. Underneath the nose, it feels like somebody's twisting. Underneath the lip, this pain in my right hip. Down on the collarbone, this pain in my right hip. Underneath the arm, I'm just using my thumb, feels pinchy and painful. Top of the head, this pain in my right hip. We're gonna go through one more time. Take a nice deep breath, come to the eyebrow. This pain in my right, shoulder, my right hip, side of the eye, it's feeling pinchy and painful. At any time that you feel like you wanna take a nice deep breath, go ahead and do that or move. Underneath the eye, this pain in my right hip. Under the nose, it's pinchy and painful. Under the chin, oh, I'm so tired of it. On the collarbone, this pain in my right hip under the arm. I don't feel like dealing with this right now. This pain in my right hip. And then bring both wrists together and tap. And now just pause and notice what's going on in your body. Oftentimes, I like to, I, I feel inspired to stretch. So especially with my hip, I just feel like Oh, I just kind of want to oh, stretch. And then all of a sudden, that stretch didn't work so well before. Now, after doing that, everything opens up and lets go. So did anybody notice that in their bodies? I hope you did. I hope you could see where maybe if your stomach was a little churned up, it's not quite as churned. So you come back to that one to 10. So the intensity of it, if my hip was like a number eight before I started, it feels like an F3 right now. It might only go down to a six, it might only go down to a seven. What do you do then? Just do another round. Even though I have this remaining pain in my right hip, it feels like it's a number seven in intensity, but I'm okay and all is well, right? And so you just do that three times, tap all the way through with a reminder phrase. You can do as simple as my right hip, my right hip, 
my right hip. You don't have to get fancy with it. Don't let the wording mess you up or keep you from doing it. <laughs> okay, so that's meridian tapping. That's the third tool that I wanted to share with you today. Um, we're going to be talking about this one in more detail at, at the next um, program that we have coming up here. Um, so if you'd like to know more about it, we'll go into it more in detail and, and work with some different issues and things. Um, but, uh, but that's the last tool because what that does is it's calming down that fight, flight, or freeze response. It's letting your body know, I'm okay and all is well. That's what that setup statement is about is, hey, here's the problem, but you know what? In the big picture, I'm okay and all is well. I deeply and completely love and accept myself anyway. It's all good. Okay, um, so that's going to help reduce the fight, flight, or freeze. So I will often use this one and feel free to throw some questions in the chat right now while I'm just kind of wrapping up here because um, I'm going to take questions in just a minute as I give you these final thoughts. Um, that um, this is something where when you've had that hit, you're trying to be calm and you know do your breathing and do your power poses and all that. And then still somebody comes along and, and blindsides you and you can feel, oh man, okay, my stomach all of a sudden feels horrible. My shoulders got all tight. Um, you know, whatever it is that you notice in your body, the tapping is a great way to deal with that. And all you do is just acknowledge what you're feeling in your body and say, I'm okay and all is well, or I deeply and completely love and appreciate myself, and then tap on those points. And it is sending a message to your nervous system, calm down, it's okay, and you're safe. And it's amazing to me how it will make the pain go away in my body, it will help calm me down. I was in a car accident and you know, got to the mode of like, oh, okay, I'm fine, and um, I don't need to worry about this, I'm just gonna power through it, you know, I'm not really hurt. And I could feel my neck kind of starting to get a little tight, I'm like, okay, I'm just stressed by all this. I didn't think I really had whiplash, but you know, who knows? I probably braced tightly. And so I just did the tapping and immediately I started to feel better. I started to cry. I kind of had a release and was like, oh, okay, yeah, that's right. I was really stressed. Let that go. And I wound up not having any negative physical impacts following that accident because I'd not had that tightness and bracing of the impact. And then I never would typically not have let that go, right? We just then keep walking through our lives all stressed instead of using the tapping to help calm us down. Okay, so we had about five minutes left here for questions. Does anybody have any questions for us? Um, and um, let's see. Oh, somebody else has a Jimmy leg. <laughs> Yeah, definitely try try doing that. If you have any any physical thing that's going on, it's amazing. Um, the meridian tapping technique I just taught you is actually originally called emotional freedom techniques. And it's amazing how much the emotion of stress plays into our physical things. We all identified areas, right, where we were, where we were feeling that. Um, okay, so thank you very much, Kristen, for that. Um, Yes, you're right. It is uh, referred to as EFT, emotional freedom techniques, is what it, that's what it stands for. Um, and I don't know about getting copies of the visual tools. Maybe Misty can answer that one for us. Um, I was going to say, uh, Wendy, if you provide those for me and people respond to the email they'll receive tomorrow, um, I can send it to them that way. Great. I will be happy to do that then. No problem. Um, is it possible to do the tapping wrong and feel worse? No. <laughs> the, the worst that'll happen is that you'll get no result. And usually that's because you weren't specific enough. When you just talk globally about, ah, I'm stressed, um, your system doesn't really know where to pay attention. So if you can be very specific, if you notice when I was talking about my hip, I was describing the pain. It was pinching, it was pulling, it felt like it was twisting. I touched briefly on the emotional piece of it. Like I'm frustrated with this. I don't want to deal with it. The more specific you can get, the better result that you're going to have, okay? Um, so you really can't, can't do it wrong. Great question. Um, let's see. Uh, the first exercise, quick review, is just power poses. Standing with your, your hands, your body open, it is going to increase your testosterone, your power hormone, and lower your cortisol. So any position that you can take that has your arms open, your legs open, and you're feeling strong, that's a great way to start your day. So thank you for that reminder. So with our power poses to start our day, then our breathing, right? Getting those shoulders up and back, 
breathing into your belly, in through your nose, out through your mouth is going to calm you down throughout the day. And then using the um, tapping can help you deal with a, like a, a hit, like an actual, you know how that is, something happens, you're like, whoa, felt like that person just slapped me, but if they didn't, they just said something kind of harsh and, and it, it was very intense. Um, let's see. Um, Oh, okay. We have somebody here. Um, Mary, I'm going to come back to your question in one second here. Let's just put you to the side for one moment. Um, and Misty, is the recording going to be available to watch again? Yes, the recording will be on the Monona Terrace Wellness Talks page. Um, give it a couple days and it should be available there. Okay, great. Um, and our other question here is um, a lot of tension in your solar plexus, right? We talked about that right up um, underneath your rib cage. And that as um, contributes to, you're saying that's contributing to your um, reflux. Acupuncture has been very helpful. I'm glad to hear that. And I would imagine that you could tap on these points as well um, when you're having an issue with it. So um, I don't know about I, I mean, I assume where she puts the needles would be the most specific. In fact, that's not an assumption, that's, that's a fact. She's gonna put them here, she's gonna put them where they belong. Um, that's the beauty of tapping is that when we're tapping, we're hitting all of the meridians, right? We're not hitting um, the specific one, uh, the, the specific point on the specific meridian that is connected to this specific situation. But because we're tapping on all of the meridians, the theory is that we're, we're gonna hit the right one at some point because of that. And that's what makes it a great self-help tool. You don't have to understand which exact point on which meridian is connected to your reflux. If you tap on all of them, you're going to have some impact. So I'm not sure that it would replace your acupuncture work. I don't. I would not recommend that, but it might be a nice thing to use um, in conjunction. All right, and um, I usually tap on the right just because my microphone's on the left. <clears throat> I'm right-handed, I'm used to doing it, but you can do it on the left. You can tap here and then tap here and then tap there. It doesn't, it really doesn't matter. They're, they're the same, it's a mirror. And um, I don't know about um, reducing Parkinson's tremor. Um, I, I have not done any research on that and don't know anything off the top of my head. You could certainly try and um, I would look up, I would do a, a search for um, EFT or meridian tapping. Um, EFT is, is how it's written. I can, um, I don't know if you saw that before, but it's EFT or, um, oops, it's harder to type like this, emotional freedom techniques. Oops. There we go. Um, and um, if you look that up in Parkinson's, you might find some, some interesting research. I know they're trying it in lots of areas. Um, they've been doing things at the Department of Defense to help um, veterans with PTSD. Um, there's, you know, and there are also people who are trained to do this in a clinical setting, more like a, a psychotherapy type thing um, as one of their tools. But as the way that I'm teaching it to you is really as a self-help tool. So certainly try it, it's, it's not gonna hurt anything. And then um, I know we're hitting at 1.30, so I, I wanted to save this last one because it's, um, uh, I wasn't sure if this was going to apply to everybody, but maybe it does. Um, somebody has written in here saying that they had a stroke and everyone's treating them like a, a China doll. Makes you feel very stressful. <laughs> yeah, that that I can imagine that that would be. And if you can do the tapping, um, if you're physically able to do that, I would just address that emotional piece that, you know, hey, I, I'm feeling like everybody's treating me in a fragile way. And um, that doesn't that doesn't work for me. <laughs> it's making me not feel good and it's not making me feel strong and like I can heal. Um, so any one of these tools is going to increase um, your overall well-being. Breathing is always wonderful um, to help reduce stress. And um, all of these, it sounds like what you're dealing with, and I'm, I'm sorry you're having to deal with that, um, uh, is, uh, is an issue. So um, it says here that Kristen would like to answer this question live. Misty, how does that work? Can we? do that? I let's see. I did not see that on my screen where. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, um, if you figure it out, let me know. But in the meantime, we should wrap up here because we're just a little bit after 1.30. Um, thank please. you very much. Are we good? Misty, did you have um, Yeah, I was going to say if Kristen could raise her hand, I could bring her in. I could find her a lot faster. <laughs> but if, if but uh, um, let's 
see the person who asked that question if you send your comments in the comment email you receive tomorrow um and Kristen if you also comment I can connect you to and then you, maybe you can um you can talk talk and figure this out together that sounds good Okay, thank you very much for that, Misty. Okay, so let's just wrap this up here. Thank you so much, everybody, for being with me today. I really appreciate it. Thank you to Monona Terrace for hosting the webinar and for Group Health Cooperative for sponsoring for us. And I hope that these are tools that you can really take forward and use in your life. We're all under so much stress right now. Um, there's really no two ways about it. So if you can take the time to do a power pose in the morning or before you go into a stressful situation, make sure that you're coming back to your breathing, check it throughout the day and just take a moment to in through the nose, out through the mouth, shoulders back and try the tapping. Really, there's no way to do it wrong. The worst that'll happen is nothing. <laughs> and I stayed away from tapping for so long after it was shown to me because I was afraid I was going to do it wrong. And so I didn't do it at all. And I really regret that because once I realized that it was something that was so accessible, it's made a huge difference in my life. And if you'd like to know more about tapping, how to use it, we'll go more into the science of it and everything um, at our next talk coming up next month. And that information is in the chat. So thank you all very, very much. I appreciate you joining me and uh, be well.